Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Will. And we're going to be talking to you about the Media Arts Club and what we have coming up the next few weeks. First, we're the Media Arts Club. We primarily focus on video and film, but we also explore other medias, such as photography and animation. October 15th is our movie night. We'll be watching a horror film in anticipation of the 24-hour film festival. We'll be meeting in the library room 3103 at 8 p.m. Watch out on Facebook for a vote to see our movie options. On October 18th and 19th, we'll be hosting a 24-hour film festival. This will give students an opportunity to form teams and create horror films within 24 hours. For more information and an entry form, please visit our Facebook page. November 1st will be the showing. It will be where we view the films created at the 24-hour film festival. It will be at 8 p.m. in Building 72. It's a costume party and there will be a haunted house, so make sure you don't miss it. That's it for this week. Coming up next, we have an interview with Luis Camaro, an instructor here at CSUMB. He'll be giving you some tips and information about horror films. Please enjoy. Well, the, the origin of a horror movie occurs in the silent era. And at that time, they didn't call them horror movies. They were just part of the dramatic genre. And the first instances, the first real instances of horror movies are, uh, you can trace them back to the late 1910s with a German movies called The Golem, which is an adaptation of the old Jewish uh, folk tale of uh, creating a monster. Uh, the Cabin of Dr. Caligari, which is like the first serial killer film and the illegal adaptation of Dracula titled Nosferatu from 1920s. So there's an earlier German film from 1913 called The Student of Prague about a young man who sells his soul to the devil that has horror elements. So that's the beginning of the genre but when it really takes off is in the 1930s in the United States when Universal Studios starts making uh, horror movies. Influenced by these German movies in style, uh, especially the lighting and the visuals, and you know, it's, you have Dracula and Frankenstein being the two evil twins of, uh, of horror. Oh, it's nothing serious, just a small cut from that paper clip. It's just a scratch. The most simple way of looking at it is that you can identify certain eras almost by decade and the style of horror movie that was prevalent at the time. So the 1930s is dominated by the Universal Studios style of horror movie, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Wolfman, th those kind of films. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> Uh, the 1940s uh, sees the rise of, uh, of films like, um, particularly dominated by a, 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 the films of a producer named uh, Val Luton, who makes, uh, starts making films that are more psychological, less dependent on monsters, and more dependent on the fear of that we cannot see. And for example, he makes a film called Cat People. Uh, about a woman who turns into a panther when she's sexually aroused or, or, or feels jealous or whatever. You never really see her turn into a panther. It's all suggested by shadows and, and such. So you see the rise of that kind of film. The 1950s sees the, uh, the evolution of horror into like the, the mixing it with sci-fi as well. So you have movies like The Blob, uh, The Thing, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers that are horror and sci-fi. And what's interesting is that the horror genre is so malleable that it's really like a marketing tool more than anything. So in the 1950s you see that they start to sell Frankenstein as a science fiction movie because that's what was popular at the time. And in the late 50s, after Alfred Hitchcock made Psycho, which is a slasher movie, and into the 1960s, 
you know, you, you start seeing films come out of uh, England, for example, the Hammer Studio makes uh, a lot of monster movies as well, their own adaptations of Dracula and Frankenstein, which are amazing. And you start getting also more into the more psychological serial killer type film with movies like Peeping Tom and moving into like Night of the Living Dead, which then feeds straight into the 1970s, that big explosion of the zombie genre, the slasher genre, the continuation of the haunted house film. So that's kind of how it evolves, you know. And a horror movie, if it scares you, it's good. If it creeps you out, it's good. If it grosses you out, it's good. It depends on what the film is trying to do. Uh, I think that, but the films that we tend to consider classics in the horror genre, films that do something more than just scare you. And what I mean by that is uh, films that get in under your skin a little bit more. Those tend to be films that address uh, the their primary intent is to scare you, or gross you out, or freak you out, whatever. But underneath, behind that uh, facade, there's maybe some social issue going on that, uh, that can get under your skin a little bit more. So for example, a film like David Cronenberg's The Fly. I think you're making a mistake. I think you really want to talk to me. Sorry, I have three other interviews to do before this party's over. Yeah, but they're not working on something that'll change the world as we know it. They say they are. Yeah, but they're lying. You know, on the surface, it's just a movie about a guy who, a scientist who, in the course of an experiment, gets his genes spliced with those of a fly. When you went through, something went wrong. Uh, and as his body changes, so does his psychology, and he becomes a monster. And the film, it, it scares you, and it's, it, it grosses you out. It's, it's kind of a terrifying idea. And, and it's very effective, but what makes the film great, beyond the fact that it is very effective at creating this reality and, and, and creeping you out, is that it's a great love story. It addresses issues of scientific ethics. If you saw how scared and angry and desperate he is. I'm sure Typhoid Mary was a very nice person too, when you saw it's a metaphor for disease. It shows what a person undergoes when they're losing a loved one to a horrible disease. Uh, it's made in the 1980s, so a lot of people see it as a metaphor for AIDS. I want to know what's going on. What does the disease want? What's to turn me into something so, else. So that's what makes a great horror movie as well. You know, great technique in its it put at the service of creating the scares, but also a deeper intelligence behind it that addresses something that uh, that gets under your skin more because it's more, uh, it can be anything, you know, for example, in, uh, in, uh, in Psycho, the Alfred Hitchcock movie, it's the first time that we saw in, in the film the idea that the boy next door, who is a seemingly nice guy, can be a completely demented and dangerous killer. You know, so that reality of uh, uh, that disconnect between the surface and the reality of a person was terrifying at the time. You know, that we still see that, you know, uh, in film. So that's what makes a great horror movie. You know, technique, obviously, because that's the main thing, and also great ideas behind it. But when we talk about the techniques of horror movie, there's so much to talk about besides just lighting and camera, which has to be subjective in a horror movie because you have to be able to place the audience within the moment that, that the characters are living. But, you know, sound is important, very important because it creates a whole atmosphere of the movie, you know, because some horror movies depend on what you can't see. So the sound of it, like in a film like Cat People, it's a great pioneering movie. And the use of us, because you can't see the panther, but you hear stuff uh, on the outside. Special effects makeup are incredibly important aspects of the technique because they create that tangible reality that the audience responds to when they're watching a film. You know, so even though films, horror films themselves be expressionistic in their style, there has to be a tangible, believable reality that the audience can surrender to so that they can have that reaction of fear or disgust. I think a feature depends more on the development of character uh, and theme uh, over the course of 90 minutes or two hours or whatever, whereas a short film is a small anecdote. So if you translate that into the horror genre, 
the horror jo- a horror film has to that's a feature that has to keep altering its dynamic to keep you interested every 15 minutes or so it has to evolve into something else and as it does so it has to develop ideas and, and character and such whereas a, a horror film that's a short film uh, what it has to do is in a very short amount of time create a situation in which you're going to be scared for a brief moment you know it depends more on the anecdote and the, and this and, and just the moment than it does on the development of character and, and theme.